Y'all get ready. Yes, you get ready. Shout out to all my tea sippers out there. We are gathered here today to sip some tea, honey. So make sure you guys have your tea cups ready because you already know this tea is what? Piping hot. Hey, y'all. Happy Wednesday. Hope you guys are doing good, honey. It is a mess in these streets. Well, in the real world streets, not the damn YouTube streets, honey. The Federal Reserve went down. They had a huge blackout. Folks can't get no cash apps. Uh, people at the store trying to purchase stuff. Their debit cards weren't working. Don't try and wire no money to your prison bay, honey. He wasn't going to get it today. So the whole Federal Reserve has been down for the past few hours and people are freaking out. But, you know, of course, the mainstream media is keeping us fed with this crash. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? This Tiger Woods crash, which to me, I just it's not funny. I'm glad he's OK. But I find it comical like that. There's all this. Oh, my God, he's crashed. This is literally this man's third crash in like, what, 10 years? Who gets into this many accidents? I'm sorry, but Tiger Woods has a substance abuse issue. Everybody knows that he has issues with pills because he's had back problems. And let's not forget when uh, his ex-wife came out with that golf club. He's had a lot of issues. And I believe being that nobody else was involved in the crash, he probably was popping pills or something. They said they didn't smell any alcohol, but you can't smell pills. So... I'm glad he's okay, but I'm noticing that he's been the latest distraction all over the news. You know, it's just funny how, like, the mainstream's just been covering him 24-7, 24-7. And, you know, a lot of people don't even realize that right now the Federal Reserve is, like, pitch black. It's, you know, I just, I don't know. Just, just me. I find it interesting. But anyways... Hope you guys are doing good. Y'all have been asking me about this whole bolo tea with the Real Housewives of Atlanta. Child... I went ahead and I watched it. You know, that's my show, so I keep up with it. Now, what I find very interesting with this is, you know, I kind of felt like they was overdoing it. I don't know. You know, it's one thing to be sexual. It's one thing to have fun and be at a bachelorette party. But I felt like they were, like, really whoring it up. You know, and it was just, they were being, like, just so over the top. Like, they've just never had dick before. You know what I'm saying? And then you had LaToya and Portia making out. Really good at Who said that? Really good at Who said that? She then you had Tanya time. You know, that's my girl now. But it's like she was joining in on the little freak fest. So the whole thing is they want to know who smashed Bolo. And for y'all who don't watch the show, Bolo is this big peen stripper, okay? I haven't personally seen it, but based on their reactions and that damn peen print, I'm going to say it's about 11 inches, okay? I'm just saying. I don't have no exact measurements. But it definitely looks like it's in the 11 inches zone. Okay, just saying. So, I mean, it was just, I mean, it was an interesting show. And, you know, I'm here for a good strip tease. The man had on bootleg Chanel and shit. <laughs> that was funny. I was here for the bootleg Chanel. I was here for the peen print. But they just acted like some thirsty ass 21 year olds who just, they was just doing a lot. Okay, and half of them are in relationships. That's what I'm, I'm kind of confused. Like, Tanya time, don't you got a man? Like, what is you doing? You know, but I will say they all look cute in their little lingerie, honey. Candy wasn't playing. She made sure the measurements was right. Everybody was looking body yaddy yaddy yaddy. Okay, I think Shamir has like such a cute little shape, honey. Shamir's outfit was so cute to me. Miss Cynthia Bailey, honey, was giving them damn 30 year olds a run for their money. I know that's right, Miss 50 Cent. You know, so I did enjoy their outfits. I thought they looked cute. I don't know what was wrong with Kenya. Kenya, we know you ain't had nothing in a while. Mr. Mark done left you. Y'all don't broke up. But Kenya was another one that was just doing too much. The outfit was cute. I was here for the red. Okay, I love me some red, honey. But the whole rolling right on the ground, feeling on herself. Kenya, get your ass up. Okay, ma'am, get up. <laughs> and then they had poor Cynthia. That unstrapped her to a damn, I don't know, sex chair or some shit. Had her legs spread out. It was just doing a lot on this episode. I'm like, they might as well just go ahead and bang. Y'all trying to, you know, shoo the, the crew out and make sure the production takes their cameras. Y'all might as well just have a big old orgy. Because that's, that's the vibe I was getting. Is that once the camera crew left, you know, it was just a free for all. But Kenya said that basically she went down there to go get, you know, her daughter some juice or something, honey, around six o'clock in the morning. And she heard all these sounds. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. And it sounded like Portia, you know, Portia's trying to play crazy and act like it wasn't her. But I wouldn't be surprised if Portia, you know, did something with Bolo. She says she follows on my Instagram. So maybe she was interested in wanting to know what that thing do, honey. I am. I was up, went downstairs. No one was in the living room. And... I could hear 
noises, moans and groans, and I heard voices coming from the hallway. I'm like, are you serious? Somebody is screwing the stripper. But the whole situation was a hot mess. Um, people were saying that Kenya was being negative and, you know, hating. And she was, you know, she was just doing too much by constantly talking about it. But damn it, I don't blame her. OK, Kenya was trying to get to the bottom of the situation. Damn it. She wants to know, did you bang Bolo? OK, that's what inquiring minds want to know. Portia, did you give him some or not? Nah? <laughs> So that entire episode to me was a hot damn mess. But, you know, like I said, I, I felt like it was all in good fun. But in certain parts, I felt like they kind of took it to the extreme. Like they just kind of came off very, very thirsty, you know, very attention whore-ish. You know, just acting like they just never been around peen before. You know, bring it down a notch, okay? They was, they was doing a whole lot. But, you know, that's what happens when you mix Bolo's big peen and alcohol, Okay. Now, in other Real Housewives, T, if y'all don't know, honey, you better call Tyrone. Call him. <laughs> but you can't use my phone. Um, Tyrone is home. I know y'all like, who the fuck is Tyrone? <laughs> Child, for y'all who don't know, honey, the Tyrone I'm talking about, not Erica Badu's Tyrone. This is Sheree. Sheree Whitfield's Tyrone, okay? His name is Tyrone Gillums. And he's been in prison for like the past I, child for years, at least seven or eight years. And so we were introduced to him several seasons ago where Nene got word that, you know, Sheree was talking shit about her to Tyrone. <laughs> and Nene said that infamous line, are you talking to Tyrone? I was cashing Trump checks, honey. <laughs> I'll be here for all the petty shit on the Real Housewives. Hey, Sheree. I'm calling, uh, I'm sitting here with Nene. Right. I'm calling about uh, what happened in uh, Philly. Nene talked to uh, She talked to me. She talked to uh, my managers. She spoke to all of us. He did not speak directly to me dealing with money, period. I don't have to lie to you. You chose to believe him over me, okay. and that's cool with me. Okay. I don't really we, we, care. We, we, I don't really we, care. Okay. What you don't understand is... Okay. You were running your mouth with him. I was running to the bank, sweetie. Good, and depositing a bank Trump honey. check. Honey, Donald Trump. Yeah, yes. the one you laughed at. I am rich. You put it I don't need rich. anything from you. You are the rich. one that's losing houses and cars, sweetie. Honey, you. <laughs> What I tell you, the Real Housewives is I don't care. They're they're meme gold, okay? But that was our first introduction to Tyrone many moons ago, back when he was a businessman, honey. Sheree, he's a businessman. Tyrone's a businessman. He has no reason to lie. Shit. Tyrone's ass was scamming. He had all types of pyramid schemes. So finally, Tyrone was caught and they sentenced him to like 10 years in prison. But he's gotten out, you know, with good behavior. And then while Sheree, she was off of the show for a few years, then they brought her back. And her whole storyline was literally waiting around for collect calls from Tyrone in her big old mansion. I'm like, come on, she by Sheree. You're a self-made woman, entrepreneur, got a beautiful home. Why are you sitting around like some college chick waiting for your boo to call you collect from jail? I have a boyfriend. He's in prison. You didn't even know it's Tyrone. Tyrone. You love Tyrone. Tyrone. Why were you so surprised about Sheree dating him? He's a con artist. Nene would never want to speak negatively about me. I'm not sure if Nene and Greg were separated. What I do know is when she met Tyrone, she was trying to pursue him. I've never been out with Tyrone. Tyrone Who said that oh. y'all been up? Okay, now you're telling on yourself. I'm committed to you. Bye. There are a lot of fish in the sea, and you go for the jailbait. Callie! You know, I don't know. I just feel like Sheree could, like, you know, do better, but whatever. Whoever you love is who you love, I guess. So... If y'all don't know, Tyrone is out. And Sheree is just super happy. You know, she's about to get some of that prison peen. It's been a while, honey. He was sentenced to 10 years back in 2013. So I'm sure he put it on her. But now, 
What they're also saying is that they're supposed to be getting married down the line. But he hasn't popped the question yet. But she really wants to get married to him. So it looks like Sheree is really in love with him. She has held him down all these years. I'm assuming she put money on his books. But you know, I don't know. But she did hold down Tyrone. So if you guys don't know, Tyrone is home, okay? <laughs> The Real Housewives is a mess, but I, you know, I love, I have a love hate relationship with this damn show. Now, in other news, okay, um, K Michelle is out here crying a river, honey. K Michelle is very mad. She's blaming black women and saying that black women are just wicked. So, what happened is that basically, um, K Michelle, nobody told her to start dancing and shaking her ass, but she felt the need to. So, she's dancing the Cardi B song, If It's Up, Then It's Stuck. All of a sudden, it looked like her booty got stuck. You know, she's dancing and trying to shake her ass, and it looked like it was stuck in a weird position, and she had to, like, you know, shift it downward. I don't know. This is a really weird video. Y'all go ahead and check it out real quick. I know that's right. All right, so y'all just watched that video, and as you see, she's trying to shake her ass. Something comes out of place, and she tries to, like, stuff it back in. Now, a lot of people sent me that video yesterday. They tagged me in the video. I didn't post it just because I really didn't care, and I kind of felt like, well, I don't know. Maybe she's going through something with her ass because she's had a lot of surgeries and shit. Well, today, she decided to address the issue because I guess she was getting roasted all over social media. And when I tell you everybody was, for the most part, roasting her, it wasn't just black women. I saw a lot of men clowning her and, you know, other races, too, but whatever so okay michelle decided to take the social media and basically write what's going on and you know she's very upset so she says so the video of me dancing is sad that i even have to explain i walked y'all through how difficult this process of removing silicone from my body for three years slash 16 surgeries did we not forget that i almost died due to this now i'm in the process of three reconstruction steps then she says what you saw in the video was a happy woman with the faha and my extra fat that I have been very open so I can heal, ladies. I didn't have to tell anybody and I could have covered up until the process was done. But no, ladies need to see and hear the truth. I decided to use my platform to help. I haven't bothered anyone. I've been out of the way. So what I don't understand is what was the purpose or what was so entertaining about a woman finally being able to walk again with extra fat from the removal. I saw the comments and of course it was black women. She made sure to type that out bold. Filled with so much hate. I got on live yesterday and I didn't care that I wasn't perfect. I knew I had excessive fat left over and I said, fuck it. I'm not going to hide nothing in my house. I don't think people truly understand. I'm just happy to be alive. I've come so far with this and I'm proud of myself. As far as my surgeries, I have one left. I hope, but this skin removal is next week. So I'm focused on that and the surgeries drain me. I'm gearing up to be in the right headspace. So if you saw where I was and where I'm at now, you wouldn't hate so hard. Oh, fun fact. In the video and still right now, I have stitches in me and an open wound that we have to care for every morning. I'm working every day with full on stitches down my back, but I don't complain. I fight through the pain and still work to provide for my whole family. And she says, I'm an executive producer and host of a new show on Lifetime shooting this month that only focuses on silicone removal and botched surgeries. I had to do something to save some people's lives. So get ready to tune in and see my surgery ups and downs and others. So that is what K. Michelle had to say. And like I said, you know, I find it very interesting that, you know, for years, K. Michelle put out a certain energy towards other black women. OK, for years, she had no problem going in on people, talking about their looks, talking about their bodies, hitting them in the forehead with flowers and shit on the show, constantly fighting, being super disrespectful. But then as soon as she gets a fraction of that back, she's upset and she's like going in on black women and saying, you know, it, it was hateful black women who were going in on her and, you know, making fun of her and stuff like that. And that black women are filled with so much hate. But again, this is the energy that you put out there for years. This is your persona. So I think for the most part, when folks were clowning her, they probably felt like she could take it because K. Michelle for years has had no problem dishing it to other people. Woman arguing with no next grown ass woman all the time. You know, I think I come across your mind a few times here and there no, via bitch. Twitter. Yes, bitch. No, you and your little Instagram essays. Instagram essays. 
who takes out time to type a full The same answer. person who oh, gets Instagram. on their interviews and want to talk about what they should have like, could have, yeah. would have did. That's you what you should have just went to jail to because you are a trespasser. Obviously, you were living in my house under my bed when I was going no, through my relationship. No, obviously, you find me, you know so bitch, because all you do is talk Rashida. about Rashida. So just okay, be worried about when your ass going to hit the floor that fake when that motherfucker drop and your ass in the hospital some where, okay? You going to hit me You going to throw a candle at me, bitch? You want to throw a candle? You want to throw a fire? Kirk and his three no. earrings? Get out of my face. Oh, get out of my face. Really? No, 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 no. No, 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 Y'all playing with it. Okay, I'm cool. Why would I be jealous? You old as You, you look old. like You are a 40 year old as fire and single without a Wikipedia you page. Like the, you look like the Woo! bottom of my shoe. Say, I got Say, more shit under my butt than you will ever have. Because you old and enough, bitch. Psycho. You 40. Look at you. You got you one deflated ass cheek. It's not working. like this. It's not working. This is what you're doing? They're you and L.A. being the same pay. The same pay doing better than you, bitch. Doing better than me. Doing better than you. What the fuck is you doing? Wow. Get the fuck out of here. Wow. Get the wow. fuck out of here. Wow. Got on spikes right in the public. You try to take me home. Get out of here. I'm not taking your ass home because I don't want to get slapped on my fucking forehead with that walk sided ass and pussy. Get the fuck out of here, bitch. You try to fuck another nigga and you got a nigga. Are you taking me out? Boot ass bitch. I know the Lord and he heard my cry. Now I'll also say this. Um, like I said, when I watched the video, I really didn't find it funny. I was just like, okay, I don't know what's going on here, but you know, whatever. I didn't post it, I didn't clown her, I didn't say anything. So she ain't talking to me. But I am going to address her response. You know, I'm happy that she made it out. You know, she's had all these surgeries. She seems to be doing better and in a better headspace. But I just really wish she would stop acting like this wasn't self-induced. Like, let's not act like you just out the blue got cancer or you were born with some type of chronic illness. This is something that you chose to have done to your body. OK, but let's not forget you brought this on to yourself. You had to have all these surgeries because you weren't satisfied with your body and, and whatever you want to change it. Like I said, if people want to change their body, you do what you want to do, honey. It's your body. But go about it the smart way. People have always said do fat transfer. That is the safest way. You know, the warnings about the whole silicone thing has been around for almost a decade now, you know, and I just think that it's good that she's telling her truth and she's letting people know. But again, let's stop acting like this is something that just happened to her out the blue. Also, let's keep it real. If you guys notice in those old videos, when she's fighting, the first thing she attacks is other people's booties. Okay, she did it with Carly Red. said her booty was deflated, you know, made fun of her. Um, then she did it with Lyrica, said she had a crunchy ass booty. So it's funny that she can dish it. And talk about other people's asses. Meanwhile, she was getting silicone injected in hers. And now she's suffering and having to take it out. So it's just like, you have to put out the type of energy that you want to receive. You can't go around clowning other women's bodies and their body parts and what they may or may not be going through with their surgeries. But then when it comes to yours, you want all this sympathy and empathy. And that's the part that kind of annoyed me. Not so much the video, because shit happens. But the fact that... I remember her specifically, you know, disrespecting these women and talking about their asses and it was all fun and games and it was funny and it was a key key. But then when it's her and her butt being talked about, you know, everybody needs to have sympathy, you know, black women are nasty and how dare y'all talk about me. But again, this is the energy that you put out. I think that's the part that annoys people is that she's constantly going off and being dramatic about it as if this is just not something that she chose to do and now she's trying to get fixed because of all the, you know, the pain and stuff that it's caused her. Now, I feel like if she didn't care about, because it looked like a butt implant to me that maybe if she was dancing it flipped over because I've seen videos of that happening before that have gone viral where it looks like the butt implant flipped the wrong way. But I think the, her response was so dramatic. That's what made people be like, damn, what the hell? I think if she'd have just kept dancing and having fun, people probably wouldn't have noticed it. But if she's dancing, it's like she stops, she looks shocked, she grabs her ass, she's like trying to fix it. It just looked weird, you know? So I think that's what caught folks off guard. Whereas if she'd have just kept playing it off and just, you know, having fun and acting like nothing was wrong. It probably nobody would even noticed it, but because she grabbed it, she seemed more bothered than the people watching, you know, um, yeah, that didn't come off like somebody who was just so confident. It seemed like she was still upset that, you know, that implant or whatever is in there wasn't in place, but you know, good luck to K Michelle.
you know, I just hope she makes it through her next surgery and she can finally be done with this chapter because 16 plus surgeries, that's a lot. That's that's a huge toll on anybody's body, especially within such a short amount of time. She's been going through this about three years now. So I just hope that she ends up, you know, being done with the surgeries. I hope her television show is successful because I think that they do need to bring awareness to this and let people know that if you want to get plastic surgery, you need to save up for it and you need to go about it the right way doing this back alley shit having people put cement in your ass and baby oil and just all the stuff that we've seen over the years it does nothing but cause catastrophes so don't put your body through that you only have one body be careful how you use it be careful what you do to it be careful what you put in it you know and you'll be okay so like I said, hopefully everything works out for her. But I think for the most part, people weren't feeling her response, especially when she's like trying to solely blame black women. When I saw a lot of people going in, like I said, I saw men, I saw white folks, I, you know, because it was this was viral it was all over Twitter. So it wasn't just black women, you know, talking mess to her. This was a viral video and everybody was clowning and roasting it. But like I said, we didn't post it because it just wasn't that serious. But um, yeah, so that's the news that I have for today, you guys. Yeah, let me know your thoughts. Let me know what you guys think about this whole Bolo situation. Do you feel like Portia, you know what I'm saying, late at night crept into Bolo's room and took a ride on that 20 inch peen? And then how do y'all feel? about you know the whole uh, bachelorette party in general do you agree with me that they were just kind of being a little bit extra kind of being you know super thirsty you know and then how do you guys feel about Tyrone honey coming home and just sweeping Miss Sheree Winfield off her feet but she got her boo back I bet you there she'll probably be back on the Real Housewives next season if Andy Cohen is smart because I heard the ratings for this season have been kind of down if he's smart he would give Sheree a peach bring her back along with Tyrone and start a whole storyline based off for that but we'll see what happens and then last but not least let me know what you guys think about the whole k michelle situation about the video that went viral and then her response you know her just being very upset at people clowning her um let me know what you guys think about that and so yeah let's go ahead and get the discussion popping make sure you guys thumbs up the video don't forget to share the video um let me see what else oh yeah last but not least don't forget to hit that notification bell so we can be done with the notification squad and uh yeah i'll talk to y'all later Deuces.